Welcome to this episode of Best of America by Horseback. I'm Tom C. The Chisholm Trail. It's part of Western legends and cowboy history. The Chisholm Trail exemplifies the cowboy spirit, ingenuity, and determination. It's celebrated in Western movies, poetry, and music. An estimated 5 million head of cattle were driven along this route from deep in the heart of Texas to newly established railheads in Caldwell, Wichita, and Abilene, Kansas. Camps grew to settlements and eventually cities. Small shops turned into booming industries. Farmers and cowboys became business tycoons. The trail brought change to all who lived near it or rode along it. Today you can ride along and see wagon ruts on the trail. We will ride the heart of the Chisholm Trail from Caldwell, Kansas, known as the Border Queen Town, to Wellington, Mayfield, Clearwater, and Wichita. We will meet the people and visit the towns that made this ride so special for us and who are committed to preserving the history of the Chisholm Trail and the Western way of life for future generations. Join us this week as we continue our journey along the Chisholm Trail, riding from Mayfield, Kansas, to the town of Clearwater, Kansas. We'll speak with owners of the Haymaker Lodge in Mayfield, where our riders enjoyed an evening of musical entertainment, dinner, and friendship. We'll learn about a day in the life of a Chisholm Trail cowboy and the roles they played during the cattle drives. Join me now for part two of the Chisholm Trail Ride. I'm Tom C. We'll be right back. On this episode of Best of America by Horseback, Tom C. continues his ride along the historic Chisholm Trail. Last week, we began our journey along the Chisholm Trail starting at Caldwell, Kansas a small, peaceful town with a rowdy western history, known as the border queen town of Kansas and Oklahoma. Tom C., with over 90 guests and staff, rode from the Caldwell Livestock Market through downtown Caldwell under the town's arch commemorating this historic trail. Then out to the Kansas Prairie to Lake Wellington along the actual Chisholm Trail. Caldwell had a strategic location along the Chisholm Trail and played an integral role during the heyday of the famous cattle drive trail that extended from Texas north to Kansas railhead towns. The people and city officials of Caldwell know the importance of preserving their history. The Caldwell Historical Society works hard to promote the preservation of Caldwell's history as a vintage cow town along the Chisholm Trail by presenting events such as Longhorn Cattle Drives, reenactments of Cowtown shootouts, and chorus line dancers. They also promote the Border Queen Museum, events at the restored Opera House, which is the oldest building in Caldwell, and the Chisholm Trail Arch, and historical markers, which describe sites and events around town. You've got to be proud of the folks here in Caldwell. Yeah, I am very proud of them. They, they really, they know the importance of it. It's a small town. There are small kids riding their bikes down the street. There are good people in these small towns that would do anything for you. I thought the uh, city of Caldwell did a fantastic job trying to cater to all the needs of the trail ride itself and to anybody that uh, was involved just to show that uh, it is a good place to live. Riding under the arch, you had to be proud of that moment. Sure, sure. Anytime you can promote your, your town you're living in and to uh, show the nation or who, all the viewers, you know, that, that's something that uh, really speaks to everybody and that uh, they, they ought to be proud of their little small town. In our first episode of the Chisholm Trail Ride series, we also learned about the origins of the Chisholm Trail and its founder, Jesse Chisholm. Jesse established a trading route from the Red River in Texas to Kansas City carrying goods to trade to the U.S. Army, as well as Indian tribes. It wasn't long before Jesse's established route met its biggest client, the Texas Longhorn, and became best known as a cattle drive trail. The riders had a very long first day as the route to Wellington Lake changed several times due to flooded fields and swollen rivers. They rode 23 miles in high heat and humidity much like the early cowboys would have experienced. The city of Wellington hosted our riders at the beautiful Wellington Lake Recreation Area and Campground for the next camp. They mowed a large open area and brought in picnic tables and fire rings for our group. The city of Wellington sits about six miles from the actual Chisholm Trail. Those visiting Wellington need to include a stop at the Chisholm Trail Museum, 
The historic building housing the museum was originally the Hatcher Hospital, in operation for over 48 years. When it closed, the Hatcher family donated the building to the Chisholm Trail Museum, which now boasts three floors filled with over 20,000 artifacts. Storms throughout the night and the next morning in Wellington brought more flooding to the area. As 40 trailers prepared to head out to the next camp at the Haymaker Lodge in Mayfield, word came to Tom and Sam that the roads going to the lodge were flooded. A good portion of the ranch, where the riders were supposed to drive cattle along the trail, was also flooded. There's something you can't predict as the weather, especially in Kansas. It changes a lot, changes often, and so I think you know, the, the rainfall this year is out of the ordinary. We don't ever get this kind of rainfall. At the same time, it, I think they had to encounter that a lot on the trail, that different changes that they had to adapt to, and they did. The unusually wet Kansas weather and severe thunderstorms once again brought change to our Chisholm Trail trail ride. Ryan Carrick and Lonnie Steiben quickly made arrangements for the riders and rigs to come ahead to the Chisholm Trail Saddle Club rodeo grounds in Clearwater a day early. Tom and Ryan met each trailer as they arrived and helped them get parked in areas where they would not get stuck. When Best of America by Horseback returns, the ride continues from Mayfield to Clearwater, Kansas where the Cowskin Creek Clydesdale Hitch Team will escort the riders to downtown Clearwater. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back to part two of the Chisholm Trail Ride in Kansas. To continue the ride from Mayfield to Clearwater, arrangements had to be made to transport the horses back to Mayfield from the rodeo grounds in Clearwater. Jeff Parker from the Florida Sheriff's Boys Ranch, Ryan Carrick, and a local businessman, Dale Zogelman, used their stock trailers to transport horses and riders back to Mayfield in a rolling shuttle. The first group of riders, the Sheriff's Ranch Wagon and the ranchers, started the ride from Mayfield. Each trailer load of horses met them along the way in a rolling shuttle until all riders were back on the trail. Brian Thompson serenaded riders with his harmonica, an instrument that was used during the cattle drive to relax and calm the cattle herds. Life along the Chisholm Trail was tough. With few towns and settlements, the drovers had to live life in the wild, camping and cooking wherever they could find a safe spot. The threat of wild animals, harsh weather, and more were a constant concern and riders had to learn to cope with whatever the trail could throw at them. A typical cattle drive up the Chisholm Trail started with the cattle being assembled in one location, where they would be branded with a single brand. A trail boss and crew of eight to ten drovers would be hired, along with several horses for each of them, and a wrangler to manage them. A cook with a chuck wagon full of cast iron, cured meats, beans, cornmeal, and flour would be hired to provide meals for the team during the duration of the trail. Most of the cowboys hired for droving were young men, less than 20 years old. Over 35,000 drovers were estimated to have worked the Chisholm Trail cattle drives during its peak, with a third of them being from Mexican or African-American descent. The history you've studied on the Chisholm Trail, tell me about it. What, what are the parts that you enjoyed the most and are de dear to your heart? Talking about the drive and the drives and what those boys went through. And even there were some even ladies that, that had short drives through the Chisholm Trail. While few and far between, there were some women that rode the Chisholm Trail, often driving cattle with their families. Margaret Borland, a rancher in the South, was the first female trail boss, and in 1873 took a herd of 1,000 head of cattle from Texas all the way to Wichita, accompanied by her children, a granddaughter, some hired hands, and a cook. Harriet Hattie Cluck 
was the first woman to ride the Chisholm Trail. While pregnant, she rode in a wagon with her two young children. Word about Hattie spread after they crossed the dangerous and flooded Red River on horseback while the wagons were floated across. A true cowgirl and pioneer were celebrating in the Wild West chapters of the great American story. The newly formed crews would drive the herds of cattle, sometimes in the thousands, 20 miles or more in the first day, to accustom them to the pace and rhythm of the drive, then slowing down to around 10 miles per day afterwards. Cattle drives up the Chisholm Trail were a slow process. While timing was important, it was also necessary to let the herds graze as much as they could. Those guys, uh, drovers, pushed those wild Texas Longhorns for hundreds of miles to the Kansas railheads over what was a seemingly endless sea of grass. If the team did their job right, the cattle would actually arrive in Kansas weighing more than when they started. Large herds could stretch out over a mile wide, meaning the working cowboys would spend their days alone on the edges. They'd sing songs, write poetry, and think of home as they rode along the old Chisholm Trail and the journey ahead. While most of the trail was a slow and lonely experience, there were occasional moments of excitement, from stampedes and cattle rustlers to lightning storms and river crossings. Cowboys had to always be ever vigilant. Each night, the team would make camp, gathering around a campfire, while the cook prepared traditional trail foods with staples like cornmeal and beans in cast iron pots and pans. They'd swap stories, reminisce on the day's events, and sing songs while taking turns watching the herd on night guard, where they'd sing long and slow songs to calm the herds as they slept. After months of riding hundreds of miles to reach their destination, the cattle would be loaded into the stockades and prepared for the long train rides to markets in the east. It is 1880, and for each of the next six years, during the summer months when the Texas cattle make their way north, Caldwell will load upwards of 100,000 longhorns onto rail cars right outside of where this building is later built. The drovers would draw pay, usually around a dollar a day, where often their first purchases would be a bath and a haircut. Towns like Caldwell, Wichita, and Abilene would draw the cowboys in with temptations of gambling, saloons, and dance halls, an attractive sight after months of rough and lonely living out on the trail. Speaking of 24-7, those are the same operating hours for the many saloons and brothels up and down Main Street. Cow towns were places of trouble. When they'd had their share of fun and relaxation, they'd head back to Texas to prepare for the next year's drive. Welcome back to part two of the Chisholm Trail Ride in Kansas. Tom C. is riding along the Chisholm Trail on Best of America by horseback. When riders reached the outskirts of Clearwater, they gathered up and waited to meet up with the Cowskin Creek Clydesdale Hitch Team that would lead the riders through town. Owned and operated by Scott and Janet Swindeman, the Cowskin Creek Clydesdale Farm has been breeding and training quality Clydesdales for 25 years. On their wagon was barn manager and trainer Keith Mann, Janet Swindeman, and Dr. David Papish. Children wave small American flags as riders pass by. Tom and Dell stop to shake hands and let the kids pet the horses. Dell even sang to Reba, a resident of Clearwater, who came out to greet the riders. Could I tell you once again somehow? Have I said with all my heart? The riders pass by the Clearwater Historical Museum, featuring the Chisholm Trail and its importance to the area. The riders continued another three miles beyond town to camp at the Chisholm Trail Saddle Club rodeo ground. The good Lord has made me a cowboy out here where the coyotes cry. I may join a drive in the springtime 
Push some cattle to Kansas to rail. I'll still be at home on the prairie for the cowboys at home on the trail. Lonnie Stiven and others in Clearwater helped transport riders back to the Haymaker Lodge in Mayfield, who hosted our riders for an evening of fellowship, food, and cowboy music. There are a lot of beautiful cowboy barn wedding venues around the country, but yours is the real deal on the real spot, and you've got to be really proud. You're getting ready to open it up to clientele of? Absolutely, uh, venue rental, so we have the indoor facility and the outdoor space, obviously, and we want to be open to whatever the folks in this area really, really need. You know, if, if there's a wedding, we've had weddings, uh, indoor, outdoor, family reunions, uh, banquets. We actually do personally host uh, banquets for fundraisers, and so we'll be utilizing this space for that as well. And, and so anything that anyone could think of that they, that they need to just be out in nature and enjoy the just the great outdoors and come check us out because well, the weather is nice now but the last several days it's been raining so if it rains we're okay because you have the indoor part you have the outdoor part you have the kitchen facilities you really can do it all yep and we're in the midst of working on the lodge so uh, we're doing a lot of this ourselves by hand and putting a lot of a lot of labor of love into the facility and so the the lodge side is going to be where if uh, once we can get uh, maybe hunters to come out and have some other events there'll be some overnight accommodations and those are almost ready to go so here really quick we're going to have uh, that to offer as well best of america by horseback staff members cooked and served a hearty barbecue cowboy dinner as Dell Shields entertained riders outside around the fire and then inside after dinner. The Haymaker Lodge sits on the Chisholm Trail, surrounded by the vast Kansas prairie. Ginger, if we were standing here a few decades ago, we would see cattle. Do you ever feel the history when you're here? Absolutely, absolutely. And being out in the open like this and, and amongst the natural prairie, because right where we're standing, it, it hasn't been disturbed. This is natural prairie grass. It's Kansas prairie. It's got the buffalo wallers all intact, still on the ground. It's amazing. It's, it's just, it's, you feel the presence of God being out amongst his nature. So if you want to get married, this is a beautiful place. If you want to ride the Chisholm Trail, this is a beautiful place. If you want to hear cowboy music, it doesn't get any better weddings and you know it's just, you've got it all together so well, we are very very pleased to know you if people want to get in touch with you for a venue here a wedding or or whatever how do they do it we keep our facebook page haymaker lodge we have an instagram account and of course we have our website haymakerlodge.com and we're open to anybody to give us a phone call and it's 316-347-1649 and you get in touch with me personally. Next week on part three of Tom C's Chisholm Trail Ride, our group heads north along the Chisholm Trail towards Wichita, visiting strategic points along the trail. And then they'll circle back to Clearwater for a very special visit. And an evening of fun-filled events and entertainment at the Chisholm Trail Saddle Club Rodeo Grounds. Thank you so much for watching this special episode of Best of America by Horseback as we travel the historic Chisholm Trail. We were honored and grateful to be able to ride this trail and visit with the wonderful communities who welcomed us into their towns and with the ranchers who allowed us to cross their land. Please join us next week as we continue riding along the Chisholm Trail, exploring the history, the towns, the people, and all the surrounding history of that. I'm Tom C., and we'll see you next week on Best of America by Horseback.